<laughs> Would you look at that? Uh, welcome. Welcome back. Uh, I'm just kidding. But I also do want to address it because I think it is important. Um, I, I think, first of all, we take all the criticism and <laughs> uh, the compliments into account. And we're trying to obviously make the channel uh, <clears throat> uh, the most beneficial to you guys. That being said, we do have a direction we want to go with the channel. Um, and we are not a reaction channel. So we're that where you see a picture in the top right and someone just saying that, ha, 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 that's hilarious. Ha, ha. That's not what we are. Um, so we're not playing clips for you guys to see the clips. That's where we always link the original clip in the in the description. Uh, what we are doing is using it as an educational channel and kind of a teaching method. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, we're getting a lot of a lot of concerns about the too much analysis. Well, the idea is we want to teach how the hand should be played from a theory standpoint or, or what the mistakes are in the hand. There are tons of reaction channels. We would love for you guys to support us, and we hope that you continue to enjoy the content, but we aren't going to turn into a reaction channel. That isn't the direction we want to go. Um, we don't think there's a lot of value in that from an educational standpoint. It's kind of just piggybacking off other people's content. Um, so, so yeah, basically, I just wanted to get that out there. We do we do look at all the, the comments and concerns. The main one is that there's too much commentary, but that's not what we are. We're not... I'm not a commentator. I'm not casting this game. Um, I'm analyzing a hand from the game. So that that's kind of the idea behind it. But uh, like I said, we, we, we respect all the comments and all the criticism. So keep letting us know if we're doing something incorrectly. Um, but that won't be changing. We won't be turning into a reaction channel, just so everyone knows. <laughs> uh, without further ado, we're going to go round three between these two. Um, <clears throat> this hand actually happened earlier, but it is... I think an interesting hand um, and there's a, a major takeaway here that I want to look at. It's a pretty simple short hand. Uh, there's something that happens though, that I think a lot of people w make a mistake. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into it, but uh, I think there's a lot to be learned from this um, about getting blown off our equity. So without further ado, let's go. Thank you all for being here with us on Friday night. I'm David Duckman, Hustler Casino Live. Brought to you by High Stakes Poker Productions. I want to thank our sponsor, WPT Global. Make it 7,000. I'll let him do all the talking. You guys got the introduction. Uh, so, yeah, we have a 248 game with a $400 big blind ante. Um, Patrick opens it up to 2K here from the hijack. Um, Dr. Batman, I believe, raises from the cutoff yeah so he three bets to um 7k which i think is very reasonable hand selection looks good sizing looks good uh when we're this deep like yes it's a little bigger than the 3x but again this is fine we could even go a bit bigger to be honest when we're this deep but but completely reasonable sizing um nothing out of the ordinary and so I'll let you see the hand and then I'll explain. Doctor. Um, <clears throat> this is something that a lot of people mix into their game. It's reasonable. I, I don't mind it. Um, the issue is that if you have, again, a player like Patrick is one of these players, but I think he's, uh, <laughs> he's not in his prime where he would do this right now. But, but like, if you're playing against some of these crushers, like any hand like this with King 10, uh, they're just going to four bet and squeeze Eric out here. And the reason for this is that what we keep talking about is Eric has completely capped his range, right? Eric can never have aces here. He can never have Kings. He can never have ace King. He really, sometimes he has jacks, I would say is the top of his range, but it, I think even that's rare. It's more likely these suited kind of aces, suited connectors, uh, maybe suited broadways, and then pairs up to, I would say between sevens and, and we'll go jacks, but I think even jacks are the cusp. So I, I think that we get in a lot of weird situations where we cap our range when we do this. Um, it's not the end of the world, especially I, I wouldn't I would hate doing this from the small blind, but in position uh, versus a very splashy, we'll call it rec player. Um, I think it's reasonable. I'm just not a fan that you're giving Patrick the option to, to four bet here because I think a lot of good players will take this option. Um, Batman. So, quiet as so late. far, I'm I think this is a mistake, but I'm not uh, it's not the end of the world. And Antonius folds. Uh, we go to a flop. How are you supposed to track me? 
That is it. So, <clears throat> oh. heck of a flop for Eric. There's the flop. Um, <clears throat> the first thing here is though, even though Doctor Batman is the three better, I think it's reasonable that he could bet on this board. Uh, I think it's also reasonable that he can check with the button behind. Um, the, his, his options here are kind of whatever he wants. With a bat, with a with backdoor spades here, I would probably look to bet. Um, and for sizing, I would go about half pot. Um, but, but again, check is completely reasonable as well. Um, check to Eric on the button. I, I think given his hand, but also his range here, I, I think a bet is in order in that he has a lot of the suited connectors. Like we talked about a lot of the suited aces, um, a lot of the pairs between sevens and, and jacks we'll call it so uh completely reasonable for eric to bet here um i'm sure that he might not be thinking that he might just be thinking his hand is strong which is also reasonable um so a, a bet looks good um for dr batman here i think he has a couple options um i wouldn't mind a check raise i think there is some a few world well not some world i think a, a, a good portion of the time he could play over pairs like this uh like tens plus and i think they perform really well with a check raise as a check raise um that being said a hand kind of like king jack i i think it's more reasonable if the eight was a nine because you would also have a backdoor straight so but but i think with a backdoor flush and two overs this is also reasonable um yeah i i, I don't i wouldn't mind folding i wouldn't mind check raising i think check calling is a little speculative um this deep like yes you have the backdoor flush draw but without a backdoor straight draw you kind of get a lot of turns where just nothing happens um in position completely different but out of position i think i would either fold this or check raise this wow That's a pretty loose check call there from batman he calls and so the comment about the pretty loose check call, I agree. It's a pretty loose check call. I don't think it's the end of the world, depending on what he puts Eric's range on, um, in that both your live, you, both your over cards are likely live. Uh, I guess there's some world where Eric could have like King Queen suited um, and then Jack. So it's close, but I, I don't think you're ever just completely dead here. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it, I think it, I think it's reasonable this deep not a huge fan okay and so that is very important I, I don't like uh, the speed that Eric checks but I love that he checks back so what happens on the turn is Dr. Batman checks and I think this is a big mistake a lot of people make and this is really the the main part of the hand I want to analyze so Dr. Batman checks which I think is, per, is perfectly standard I don't think there's anything else to do and Eric ch snap checks back um so Eric has ace three of hearts here. And I think it's very important. A lot of people look at this and go, okay, well, I can, I need to bet to get my opponent to fold out whatever they have. I'm, I'm, I'm semi bluffing here with my hand, which is reasonable when you have this much equity, but it's also such a disaster if we bet like pot here, for example. So let me just go to the size of the pot um, and then we'll continue analyzing. And it's the Jack of hearts. So, um, but pretend the Jack of Hearts isn't here. We'll talk about the turn. Imagine if Eric continues semi bluffing here and bets 40k into so he, he bets just over pot. Um, and then Dr. Batman either shoves or raises to anything that's reasonable, right? Like there, there'd be 80k in the pot. I, I could see him raising to 120k, uh, 100k. So it, it's such a disaster. When we have a hand as strong as Ace Three suited with as much equity as we have, if we if we bet and get blown off this hand, if, now, if we had a hand like Ten Jack off, for example, um, or or no, Ten Jack's a bad example. Let's say let's say Queen Ten off on the on the on the turn. Um, it's not the end of the world if we get blown off that hand, right? It, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Or or if we had like seven five. Um, again, not the end of the world. We, we have no showdown value. And if we bet and get jammed on, I mean, it sucks. We didn't get to peel our gutter, but it's not the end of the world. When we have these 10, 15, well, I mean, we don't know how many outs we have because Dr. Batman could have a set, but when we start pushing 10, 15, even 20 outs, it's a disaster if we get blown off of our hand on the turn. Um, so I think a lot of people look to bet here thinking, oh, I have a, I have a massive draw uh, and I can get him to fold. But let's think about the hands that we actually get Dr. Batman to fold, okay? So again, pretend the Jack of Hearts isn't here. We're talking about just the turn specifically. Um, let's say Dr. Batman has a hand like King Jack. 
does it matter if he if we get him to fold? Not really, because we're ahead anyway, right? He's got limited outs. He's he's got two jacks and two kings that he can hit. Um, because like the jack of hearts is no is no good, and the king of hearts is no good. So does that matter? No. Um, what if he has just two random over pairs, over, over cards? Right? Does that matter? No, uh, unlikely. Um, what if he has a hand like a set of eights or set of nines or pocket queens? Is he folding? No. And could he jam or raise? Yes, very likely. Um, what if he has, um, I guess, five, six is a bit of equity. But you, but you get the point that there, there's a lot of hands that it doesn't matter. If he has specifically ace-king we can, or ace-queen, we can get those to fold the river with a bet, right? So we we don't need to just be pumping money into the pot here unnecessarily when, A, we still beat uh, not all, a lot of his hands, but a, f a few of his hands. And then B, we could put ourselves in a terrible position where he can just jam on us. And, and now what do we do, right? We have a hand as strong as ace-three, which has tons of equity against almost anything he has, even a set. Um, but we're, we're not loving calling off with ace high, right? Um, so I, I really am a fan of Eric's check on the turn. I think this is a, a great play, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, o overall phenomenal. Uh, Dr. Batman, I think there's not much to say. There's, there, he just, he has to check. There's no, there's no real reason, especially, I mean, there's some world where he can donk, but just never with this hand. Um, and, and I think the donking would just be terrible. So uh, overall, I think super standard by both, but I really want to, the, the highlight of this video is this play that we, we always want to have a plan when we're betting and to just randomly bet for the sake of betting to get people to fold is not always the, the, the best option. And I think Aaron is off or Aaron, Eric is often guilty of that, of just blasting money into the pot for the sake of it. Um, this is, this is a really good play. This is, I commend Eric on this great, great check. And then River, we pick up the Jack of Hearts. So, uh, sorry, we pick up the Flush, the Jack of Hearts comes in. Um, this is a spot where, uh, again, is a great, first off, against most players, but specifically against rec players, which I would say Dr. Batman is, um, they very rarely expect you to check back Flush draws. Um, so, I don't think there's any world where Dr. Batman puts him on a Flush. The other thing is here, this is a spot where, we really are only going to have, in my opinion, a couple sizings, um, or really two. I think we're, we're checking or we're betting polar. I don't think there's any reason here to bet a middling size. Um, we either want to wrap that we have a flush or, I guess, a set of jacks that came. Oh, I mean, we might not check back the turn with this, with jacks, but 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 basically we're, we're kind of wrapping a flush here or nothing, right? Um, like we might have some five, six or, or whatever kind of hands that just completely whiffed. Um, so... So I think this is a spot, especially against someone like Dr. Batman, where we really want to go polar. The other reason we want to go polar here is, is we're thinking of what Dr. Batman's range is here, right? If Dr. Batman has a hand like Ace-King, Ace-Five, Ace-Whatever, Ace that's not a pair, he's just folding. So we're never getting value from that, which is what we talked about on the turn, why we can check the turn and, and just blast him off those hands. Um, if he has no pair, he's never folding. If he has an over pair, so whatever, like queens that he slow played or, or a set of jacks here or, or even a whatever set or eight set of nines, um, unlikely that he has those, but he could. Uh, he, he's obviously never folding no matter what we bet. So with that being said, when, when, when the villain kind of has a range where he's calling really any sizing um, or, or just folding, we really want to look to be polarized um, with our bet here. So I think we're looking to do like I w on this river, me personally, I would bet around 50K. Um, I think 40k is reasonable, even like, I mean, I would consider pot here 40k, I wouldn't bet 37k. Um, so I, I would just I would bet between 40 and 50k here. Um, and I, I would be targeting his hands that are exactly pairs, um, or or sets. Um, I, I think that's that's basically the only range that Batman can call and the only realistic range that Batman has. He's never calling ace king here. Uh, I mean. Maybe Dr. Batman is, but 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 the average player is never calling Ace King here. So uh, that's kind of what I would be looking to do. Batman hits his jack on the river. It's the heart, though. This is going to cost him. I, I don't think he puts Eric on a flush draw ever. I mean, depending on the sizing here from 40, Eric, I, I don't think there's any question. There's 40 and a snap. Quick call. I'll take it. <laughs> That's nuts. 
So here's a card for you. <laughs> and he gives them the card. The, the those are the bad beat cards that we talked about. Um, yeah. So overall, I actually think Eric played phenomenally well in this hand. I think he made two great decisions. Well, um, preflop I think is is a little eh, but I don't mind it. I think there's a world, especially where we're we're against a fish uh, or a recreational player. We definitely want to be mixing it up a little bit and getting in the mix. Um, I think preflop preflop is questionable. Uh, flop. Amazing turn, amazing river, amazing. I think three perfect streets of poker by Eric. Doctor Batman, um, pre flop was his best street. Uh, flop was meh. I think I prefer a check raise with that hand. I think check call is kind of eh. I, I would also I could just fold as well. I'm I'm not opposed to either of those. Um, turn standard, obviously check check river. I mean, Eric going polar, I think, is exactly what this bet is designed to do. You just you just can't fold here. I, Eric either has, like, a flush or, I guess, somehow maybe a set. Um, I guess could have, like, Jack A suited. But, but uh, like, like in theory, he shouldn't. But I know that these live players like to mix it up a lot. So I, I could see there being a world where he, he rivers two pair. But, but I think, in general, he's kind of capped at uh, air or... Or a flush here. Um, so, yeah, overall, actually, surprisingly, Eric played really well. And I think Dr. Batman, not too many mistakes other than maybe the flop call, I think, is a little loose. But after that, I think is all, all is pretty standard. Um, the, ma the main takeaway here being that we, we really need to be thinking what our bet is reflecting or what the repercussions or what the actions of our bet will cause. Um, and so not betting the turn here by Eric is, is really good. We, we don't want to be the hands that we're targeting him to fold. We can get him to fold anyway on the river. Um, <clears throat> and and it, it, we don't want to get blown off a hand as strong as ace three here. So overall, uh, actually really well played hand and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.